Hi booktube, Lynette here and today I'm going to talk about all the books that I finished in the month of June. So I'd set myself some goals at the beginning of June and I don't think I actually did very well this month at all. The first goal was to read one book for the in-depth read-along, which I did, to read two books for Romance Opoly, which I did, to read two books from a series and I had chosen the Chronicles of Narnia because I was already part way through that series and I had chosen to try and read Prince Caspian and the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I only finished one. I wanted to try and read another 5% of uh, Clash of Kings by George R.R. R. Martin. I didn't read any of it and I wanted to start a new classic which I kind of did but I'll get into that a bit later on. So the first book I finished in June was Vengeance in Death by J.D. Robb. This was to read uh, the next book in the In Death series. So this was book six in the series. And again, thoroughly enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Uh, this book, Serial Killer, has decided to target Rourke again. And this time he not only is going after Rourke, but he's actually killing people close to Rourke. This seems to be in vengeance for something that happened when Rourke was a very young man for an act of vengeance that Rourke had actually taken as well. The killer is actually quite intelligent in this one. He's really very, very good. And he's setting Eve a series of riddles that she has to solve. But the time frame in which she has to solve the riddles gets shorter and shorter with every murder. They eventually work out the connection and they manage to try and track down anybody else who could possibly be on the killer's list. And they then use that to try and stop them, to try and stop anybody else from being murdered. This takes you on a bit of a wild chase. You actually leave New York in this one and we go to Ireland. We see a bit more of Rourke's past. And we see again, see Rourke and Eve growing closer and closer. Eve is finally admitting that she does need Rourke and she does need Rourke as more than just a husband. It's really, really nice seeing this slow burn relationship happening over the course of these books. I know we're going to get to a point where that's going to stop happening. But it is actually really, really nice. It's, it's not all done and dusted and wrapped up in one book. There's lots and lots that Eve needs to overcome personally and emotionally during the course of these books. And I do thoroughly recommend them. Like I say, I'm only doing one book a month uh, because to do more than that, I would burn out on them. There are a lot of books in this series, so... But if you like crime romance, then give them a go. The next book that I finished is Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis. And this is the fourth book in the Narnia series. Yes, this is the fourth book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. And this is about the Pevensey children. They are again drawn back to Narnia. And this time they have to help get the rightful king back on the throne. They meet the rightful king by accident, um, purely because they are found by someone else who takes them to him. And it happens from there. The second half of the book, it falls a bit flat, it goes a bit quick. It goes from Prince Caspian being in hiding to being on the throne in the blink of an eye. But that said, they aren't written for 40 year old adults. They are written for children 7, 8, 9, 10 and above. So it's not surprising. Uh, a, a younger child would probably find it far more gripping. But I read it. I really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. Uh, it's not the best. I, I think for that nostalgic feeling I think The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is always going to be the one that catches my attention and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader as well although I'm hoping to get to that one soon but yes solid read do recommend them if you've got young kids or if you just want a bit of nostalgia I, I wouldn't knock them for that reason they just they just don't blow me off my feet anymore like they used to uh, when I was a child. The next book that I finished in June was Dirty Doctor by Whitney G. Uh, this is about Garrett and Natalie who have been talking online 
and they don't really know that they are both doctors and that Natalie is destined to start work in the private practice run by Garrett. And Natalie does realise just before she starts the job and after a short time working together, uh, because they are then thrown together and have to work together for a while, Garrett comes to realise it too. Only Garrett's not very happy with Natalie because she stood him up when she realised who he was. From there, it's a bit of a push and pull romance. Obviously, Garrett's not very happy uh, and tries to freeze Natalie out. And then after a time, Natalie does the same to Garrett. And there's a bit of toing and froing. But eventually, they figure it out. There's a non fraternization clause in the contracts for people who work at that practice. So they've got to sort that out. And in the end, it's a happy ever after. So there is a happy ending. They do get together. It was quite a quick read, but I did enjoy it. I wouldn't rush to read more by Whitney G, but I have read books by her in the past and enjoyed them. So she is someone that if the books came up on my radar, then I probably would pick them up. The next book that I completed in June was Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. And this book is one that had me a bit torn. I've given it three stars because... The first half of the book is a two-star book. The second half of the book is a four-star book. Uh, so on average, that came out as a three. I don't know what to say, really. Queenie is not an easy-to-like character in the first half of this book. She's not an easy-to-connect-to character in the first half of this book. She is very, very difficult. Um, sorry, Cat decides he wants to join in the discussion in the first book she's on a very destructive path she's on a break from her boyfriend and she's struggling to deal with that but she's making some very very bad decisions uh, in her life regarding how she conducts herself during this break so the men she associates with how she's dealing at work because she's struggling with her boss but she's also struggling to do her job as well and I found it very, very difficult. I came very, very close to actually putting the book down and not finishing it. But I kept hearing and seeing that actually you need to keep reading. You need to get to the second half of the book because the second half of the book is great. And it is. The second half of the book is really, really good. Queenie's been on this really destructive path. But somewhere around the middle of the book, she actually realises that she's in trouble and she needs help. And she asks for help. She... It, it all turns out that obviously there's a lot of mental health issues going on here and she gets help and she goes to therapy and she turns herself around and seeing that happening it really it actually turned Queenie into a much more likeable character it turned her into much more into a character you could connect with because you started to get some backstory and you started to understand the reasons why she was behaving like she did and that was a lot of the problem with the, the beginning of the book. You were just thrown into it uh, with no backstory. You were just thrown into this young woman who's badly treating herself and has doesn't seem to be able to see the wood for the trees, uh, for want of a better term. And yes, just real struggle. So if you are reading it, I do recommend ploughing through it because it does get better. And you will have a completely different opinion of Queenie by the end of the book. I just I just couldn't connect with her. I think it's like the the author had written two separate books and slammed them together into one um, or it was written by two different authors and put together into one. The writing style in the in the first half is completely different to the writing style in the second half and just it just made you struggle with it. But plow through it. It is good. There are the, some little things in there, you know, the way uh people talk about colour and treat people of colour especially men white men treating women of colour I have to say there's one thing that really stood out for me and it and it's how much people would just touch her hair and why why would you walk up to someone you don't know and just randomly touch the hair and say oh I love your hair it's rude don't do it uh, and I think it probably is something that maybe happens more to people of colour than it does to white people. It's certainly it's never something I've experienced and, and I'd slap your hands if you tried to do it to me. But 
I, I just I couldn't get over all these little things and it it just it's one of those things that started to bring home to me just all the little ways we act in society that aren't acceptable and it's it's a good book if you can try to plow through it the first half of the book does have a lot of that in there so it is educational as well so I do and I don't recommend it but yes read it so the final book that I finished in the month of June was an advanced reader copy of a book that was actually released right at the end of June and that book is Dead Pretty by Samantha Towell and this book wow 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 it's a more of a psychological thriller with some romance thrown in Samantha Towell is actually better known for writing romance and she's written some absolutely brilliant romances she's one of my favorite authors uh, I actually I loved everything she's ever written including this one so this book was a bit of a move was quite a move away from her normal uh, trope of book that she would write uh, the ones that spring to mind are her uh, rocker romance series a, a round band called the storm and then there was uh, she did a couple of books set in the world of motor racing as well uh, which were brilliant but this book just stunned me absolutely loved it like i say it's a psychological thriller it's about audrey who has moved away from her hometown because she previously had a stalker who has been caught and sent to prison the stalker started out by leaving her little gifts um, and those little gifts weren't exactly pleasant and he moved on to murdering women and women specifically of a certain type like I say, Audrey's moved away, she's moved to a new town and supposedly no one knows where she is, not even her brother Cole. And a new man moves in across the hall, Jack, and she starts to chat to him, to talk to him, she starts to let him in. And as she does this, uh, she starts to receive some other little gifts and there are some murders that happen nearby. And it seems like the stalker has followed her. So then there is a question over if the stalker has really been caught or if there's a copycat and the copycat has found her. I'm not going to say any more than that because to say any more than that, I'm going to risk giving away the second half of the book. If you like psychological thrillers but don't read romance, there is a big big plot of romance in the middle because that's what Samantha Tao writes and that's what she writes well so if you can read through that then do because yes you won't see it coming and that's all I'll say and I'll leave it at that uh, I gave it four stars uh, absolutely loved it uh, like I say I highly recommend Samantha Tao as a romance writer if she ever chooses to write in the psychological thriller genre again I will pick it up because I absolutely loved this story. I did pick up two other books uh, but I didn't finish them. Uh, the first one of those books is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. This is the fourth book in The Wheel of Time. It follows on from the events of book three where Rand has declared himself now and we're moving forward with the story and he's starting to gather his followers. Can't really say any more than that. Starts to give it away if I say any more than that. I think as I get deeper into the series, I'll just have to be saying, I read this, I enjoyed it, move on. But I didn't get, as you can see, I didn't finish it. I'm halfway through, but I have been reading this during July as well. Or, you know, the few days that we are into July. But yes, still thoroughly enjoying this series. The other book that I started but didn't finish is a book that I picked up because of everything that's been happening in the world. In June, it I made the conscious decision in June that I have to sort out the diversity in my reading. It's partly been uh, led by the Black Lives Matter. Lots of people that I follow on Instagram and YouTube are talking about it and still talking about it and they should be talking about it. But I kind of, I've been in denial about how white my reading is and I need to change that. And they were there's lots of people out there who are putting up lists of authors of color 
good books that represent colour and I decided to download a few books. So I downloaded some romance books uh, by authors of colour and I downloaded a couple of fantasy books. I also downloaded, and this goes back to the classics part, I also downloaded and started The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. Although this book was written in the early 80s, I think it's actually considered a modern classic because of the content that it deals with. It deals with a black woman in 1930s America, 1920s, 1930s America. She's writing letters to God and basically she's using these letters as a diary uh, to talk about her day. And it talks about the abuse she suffers as a young woman at the hands of a step parent. It talks about the abuse she suffers at the hand of her husband. It talks about the prejudices of white people against blacks and the um, oppression that they were under at that time. And it is an educational book as well. It's a book that's been on my radar since I was in my teens. It was one that my sister had to study at school and she had to watch the film and it was something that has stayed with her for a long, long time. So she talked about it a lot and for books and films to affect my sister in that way, you know, it, it did put that book on my radar and it's just one I never got around to reading and I'm ashamed that I've never got around to reading it and, um, because I should have picked it up years ago. But I have and I'll talk about that a bit more in my monthly wrap up when I talk about that at the end of July because I finished it in July rather than in June. So that was all the books that I managed to finish in June. I hope you had a good reading month. Um, if you have, tell me down in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you about the books that you've read there. Uh, if you'd like this uh, video, please like and subscribe and I will see you all again soon. Bye!